Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. How many of us are here because we need Jesus in our lives? And how do we know that Jesus is here? In this place? How do we know? Let me explain to you why I'm asking this question. I am asking this question particularly because we are now living in an era where we have people who go to the house of God and not know what they are doing in the house of God. Going to church has now become a ritual. Going to church has become something that if you don't do, you don't feel right. But what exactly are we doing in the house of the Lord? Why are we in the house of the Lord? The Bible says in the last days, people will be lovers of self. People will start chasing after material things other than the reality or the main purpose of Christ in the kingdom of God. I ask you again, what are you doing here today? We all have different reasons why we are going to church. Some are going to church because we have problems. We want to be prayed for and our problems come to end. Some because we are sick. Some because we want jobs. Some because we heard if you can go to church automatically, your lives turn around for the better. Some we go to church because there are some things we are looking for. And some we go to church because we heard there's a prophet of God who when I get there, he will tell me all my problems. And I become happy. But what is the main reason for you to go to the house of the Lord? Ask your neighbor, what is the reason for you to go to the house of the Lord? I'm not saying it's wrong. Please hear me well. I'm not saying it's wrong for you to have faith in God and anticipate the promises of the Lord. But as you are anticipating and waiting and having faith in God, what is the purpose of you going to church? What are you going to do there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me, somebody? Are you with me? What is the main purpose for us to go to church? When God started this institution of a church and giving up Christ so that he can die on the cross of Calvary, so that we can be birthed again and return back to God, what is the purpose of us as people going to church? Can you please open your Bible? I'm going to open scriptures that we are all aware of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you please open your Bible in the book of John chapter 3? You will read from 16 to 17. If you are there, say I have it so I can read. I want to read with you at the same time. John 3, 16 to 17. Can I read? Are you there? Are you there? Okay, let me read for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to John chapter 1.
Can I read verse 4? Are you there? I'm reading verse 4 of John 1. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Hallelujah. Can you please close your eyes? eyes so we pray for the Father, we thank you for your word this afternoon. Lord, we pray that let your word touch our hearts. Lord, and let our will be inclined to your will. We pray, O oh God, that let your word be a seed in our hearts today. That shall bring fruits that will bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. In John 3, the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he alone gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. I'm very sure you've heard that scripture a number of times. I'm sure maybe some of us, the day we accepted Christ in our lives, we had the very same verse. But let's read it again. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave, meaning God in his infinite capacity loved you and me. And he decided to give up his only son so that you and me can be reconciled back to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember in the, in the book of Genesis, the Bible said God created everything. And after he created everything, he called the angel and said, let's create men in our likeness, in our own image. The purpose of God to create everybody or humankind was for him to have fellowship with a being that looks like him and that could represent him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says when he had agreed with the angels, he created a man from the dust of the earth. And he called him man. After that, he said he created men. He gave men charge over things that he had created before he created the men. And the first man was called Adam in the book of Genesis. The Bible says when he had created Adam and he had taken control of everything, he then decided, let me create a second human being, a companion for Adam. And the Bible says, out of the rib of Adam, God took a rib and created Eve, the second human being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After he had created Adam and Eve, the Bible says he placed them in the garden of Eden. And he said to them, you can eat everything that you see here. Control everything. Take care of everything. But do not eat a fruit that comes from the tree in the middle of the garden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Meaning when God created mankind, his idea was to have a person that looks like him that would control the earth and take care of it. This purpose was to create a human being who he can trust and live in charge of the earth. Hallelujah. 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 And when the Bible goes on, it says, when God had now created them, it, then a serpent came, the devil in the form of a serpent, and robbed mankind. And told them to eat the fruit that they were told not to eat. And since that day, that Eve plucked the, tree, the fruit and she ate and gave to her husband. Sin was now found in mankind. And from that very day, every mankind that was born in this earth was born under sin. Are you hearing me, somebody? 
Am I making sense to you? Are you hearing me? The Bible says the serpent deceived Eve and said, God does not want to tell you the truth. The truth is, if you eat this fruit, you'll become wiser than God. The Bible says Eve plucked the fruit she ate. She felt the fruit was good and gave to her husband. He also ate. When he ate, it was when he has eaten that he remembered, ah, God said we mustn't eat this fruit. It's a forbidden fruit. At that moment, the Bible says they ran away and they hid themselves because they realized that they were naked. And when God was now searching for them, he couldn't find them where he left them. Why? Because they have now crossed the bridge that they were told not to bridge, to cross. The Bible said in the afternoon, God went to the garden and he called for Adam. He called for Adam. Firstly, Adam didn't respond because he knew the command he was given, he has already broken it. Meaning, Adam knew at that point that what I have done is contrary to what I was told. Meaning, there will be repercussions that will fall on me because what I have done. And that is where we come in. Like Adam and Eve, we are deceived on a daily basis. We can say, yes, we are children of God, we have received Christ, but we are still deceived on a daily basis, not only by the devil, by the company we keep, by the desires that we are looking for, by the materials that we are yearning for, by the things that we want so much more than the kingdom of God. We get deceived. And when we get deceived, we move away from the law and the road of God. Meaning when we deceive ourselves, why am I saying we deceive ourselves? Because we know the truth. The Bible says when you know the truth, the truth shall set you what? The truth shall set you free. We know the truth as children of God. This is the mistake that we are making. We are coming to the church, to church all the time. That's why I asked you in the beginning, what are you doing here? We come to church all the time. But the, our solemn reason why we are here, it's not for God or for his kingdom. We are here for different reasons. And we forget one thing, that the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all is righteousness. Before you can get to the part of all these things shall follow. There is all his righteousness. Which is something that we Christians of these days, we don't consider. It's something that we write out of the scriptures. And we only quote the part of the Bible that works for me. The one that tells me I'm not doing right, I don't quote it. Remember, child of God, God didn't save you for us to keep going back to the same things that we are doing. The Bible says when we keep sinning, we say that God is a liar. And the Bible says God does not lie. God never lies. We are saved by the blood of Jesus we hear an altar call, we come to front and we say, Lord, we are accepting you today as our Lord and Savior. We go home rejoicing and being happy. Then challenges come. Like the challenge came to Adam and Eve, then the challenge comes. Then you start, we start analyzing life by our naked eyes. The Bible said, God loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. So that whoever believes in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. We are believing yes with our mouth but our hearts are far away from the God we say we are believing in. 
We believe yes with our mouth. When we pray, we say, Father, I believe in you. But me dear, let me sipil or yarena. Are you on sure? Yes, we believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are enticed by our own desires. In John 1 4, it says, This life that you have eternally is the light of men. And when this light appears unto you, the darkness that is found in you cannot comprehend it. Meaning, the darkness that is in you and around you should make way for the light that is coming. Now, my question is why there is still darkness? around you and in you if there's Jesus in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor and say, why is there still darkness? If there is Jesus in you. Remember this life, this eternal life, it is the light of men. The light of men. Meaning, if you have this light, you cannot stumble. Hear me too well. Not that I'm saying there won't be any challenges in your way of salvation. There will be. But because there is light within, you are not going to stumble because... So why are we keeping on stumbling? Over the same thing over and over and over again. Why are we stumbling? If we are having eternal life, which is Christ, the only begotten son of God, and that life which is light unto us, why are we stumbling? Because we are walking in the light, not in darkness. Ask your neighbor and say, why are you stumbling? We simply stumble because our main reason to be in the kingdom, it's no longer Christ. The light has gone out of us and we are back into darkness. We have become wolves in sheep's clothing. We don't go to God because we are seeking him with all our heart. If you can understand that without Christ, I don't have life. You will seek God with all your heart because you understand without him, I cannot exist. If you can read in the same John, the first verse and the second verse. The second verse says, there is nothing that was created without him. Meaning before you were created, Christ was. And in him, you were also created. Meaning, if Christ didn't exist, your existence is not there. Hallelujah. 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 We stumble in the way of the Lord because we have believed, yes, the first day. We have believed with our hearts and agreed, Lord, thank you for saving me from my sins. But when we left here, we went very back to the things that we were doing before. The only difference is that now we know how to justify our wrongdoing. As Christians and children of God, there are things you cannot do, but there are things that you can do with pride and not be ashamed of. And because you say you're a Christian, you make it sound as if it is okay to do what you're doing. Like for instance, the Bible say, love your neighbor like you love what? Yourself. And half of us, we come to church to prove to the next person that I have a better outfit than yours. We come to church, we wake up, we bath, we prepare ourselves. And in our mind, it's so lonely to say, Kinya kwa boncha mali hodura aka siluke. Where is the light in you? Because light does not dwell in darkness. 
We wake up in the morning, we prepare ourselves, we are going to church because I want, I want the man of God to prophesy me. And then after prophesying you, then what? What happens to your soul? We go to church solemnly because there is a position they have given me a church. If I am not there, Mamurutu will realize that I'm not there and she's going to call me and I'll be in trouble. And then what happens to your soul? Because in heaven, your, your position is not there. What happens to your soul? Why do we say we are Christians, children of God, washed by the blood of Jesus, but yet we walk in darkness? Yet we dwell in darkness. We eat in darkness. We even connive against each other in darkness. And we still come to the face of God. And we don't pay attention or take heed. There's such amount, ultimate grace that God is giving us on a daily basis. We forget about that. The Bible says you work out your salvation daily. We completely forget about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we are the children of the light, why is there still darkness around us? Hallelujah. Open your Bibles in Matthew 11. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Because there is so much darkness around us, we profess cast with our mouth and our lips, but our hearts are so far away from him. Because of the worldly desires, our lust, our fleshly lust, of this world that we have tend to carry on ourselves, they now become a burden unto us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you read in your Bible, verse 28 to verse 30? Can you, all of us, can we read in our Bibles? Let me read for you. Verse 28 says, Come to me, all who, you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Our yokes are no longer easy and light. Why? Because we have our own man-made yokes that we have implemented on ourselves. What do I mean by that? Our fleshly desires has become our God and our bellies have become our God. And in the process, the very same things that have become our God is now a burden for our souls. Have you ever wondered why all of a sudden you love praying, you love going to church, you love worshiping, all of a sudden there are certain worship songs that irritate you? That when somebody sings a certain song, you just go out of the spirit. How? I don't know. All of a sudden, a certain song irritates you. All of a sudden, when you want to pray, it's like there's this burden that is so heavy that you can say, let me put it here. I'll come and see you. And then you leave. 
Why? Because the ultimate reason for us to be in church, it's not Christ anymore. Come to me, all who are heavy laden. The Bible says, cast your cares unto me because I care. But because we are in darkness, because we are in darkness by our lifestyles, but the type of the words we use, but the kind of things or, or the manner of way we do things, we are in darkness. Don't forget the Bible says, by fruit you shall know them. By their fruits. So if you are not having the fruits that are going hand in hand with the Bible or the word of God, it means we are still where? In darkness. Now this darkness has become heavy, has become a burden on us. This darkness of us has now become an issue. That we Christian of these days, we know how to sort it well and say, no, I trust God with all my heart. No, but this one, you know, I have learned to live with this problem. The Bible says, come all unto me, you who are tired and heavy laden. But because we are in darkness, our burdens and things that are making our spirit to be weary, we turn them into normalities. Like the Christians of these days, I can live with this. I have learned to live with this. Why? Because we don't want to get out of the darkness that we are in. You know, if I can take this issue and I go to God and I say, God, my problem is I don't like other people. God will not only take out that. God will also take out this one of gossiping others. And this one of, st of stealing money of tithe. And this one of, of insulting people. But because you know, there is something that I'm doing that is under my armpit. And I don't want anybody to find out. You don't go before God. You tend to say, no, I have learned to live. Ah, se chiki twayechi. If like even ni live utata. Ah, wajesu isalimarena. But what is it that the word of God is saying about it? Why do you have to carry around a burden when there is somebody who died for you on the cross of Calvary just to redeem you, alone, just to save you, just to care for you, just to give you a good life? Why do we choose and continue choosing to stay in darkness? Ask yourself that question. Why do I keep choosing to stay in darkness? Yet there is a grace of God that I'm being preached to all the time when I get to church. There is mercy of God that is available for me in his altar all time. I, every time I go before the Lord. I can lay down all my burdens and say, God, I'm giving my all unto you because you are my everything. You are my ultimate. Besides you, I cannot do anything. Apart from you, there's nothing that will come out of me. For God so loved this world that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary just to save you and me. If Jesus died to save you, why do we keep going back to where he picked us from? There is a saying that says, So why is it that when Jesus has washed us with his precious blood, we still go back to our sins? Those who believe should not perish, but have everlasting life. After being cleansed and washed by the precious blood of Jesus, why do we go back to our sins? Why 
and we become dirty all over again. Like nothing has been done to us. Why do we keep impelling ourselves with burdens that we cannot take away ourselves? The Bible says, my yoke is easy and light. But we keep on going after the yoke that is heavy and burdening. Whereas there is Christ who died for us. There is Christ who, who paid the price for you and me. There is Christ who's not counting what you've done and what you didn't do. There is Christ who's not looking where you've been and how much you have done. There is Christ who loves you regardless. Why do not we go back to him? Christ, our hope of glory. Our life and our light. Hallelujah. 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 I know, yes, there are challenges or there are things that maybe when you have done, you cannot turn back over your shoulder and you look out like, you know what, it's just too much. Or you know people, people know me for this. And if now I repent of this, what is it that people are going to say about me? What is it that Christ is saying about you anyways? What is it that Christ is saying about you? The things that we now do and we call them the gospel of Christ, are they found in the word of God? Or are we now starting our own route that, that suits us best of salvation? Hallelujah. 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 Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes, there are things that we have done in life. Mistake we have done in life. But there is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who died on the cross of Calvary for you and me. And this Jesus, what he's offering is life in abundance, everlasting life. He's not taking anything away from you. He's giving you everlasting life. We have so much moved away from the concept and the reason of the kingdom of God. We are now implementing our own kingdom. Of God. That makes sense to us and that looks right to us. Hallelujah. 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 Read your Bible in Isaiah. Isaiah 1, verse 8. When he says to you, Come, come, come to me. Let us sit and reason together. Come, let us reason together. Hallelujah. Isaiah 1 verse 18. Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient... You shall eat the good of the land. I want you to ask yourself this question. Do I still have Christ in me? Don't ask somebody. Ask yourself. Do I still have Christ in me? Everything that I do, do I still have Christ in me? 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 
in my doings, in my walkings, in my talkings? Is Christ still found in me? Is Christ still found in me? The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, we love the scripture that says, God shall supply all our needs according to his glorious riches that are in Christ. Yes, because all his promises are yes and they are amen. But if there is Christ in you, if there is what? If there is Christ in you. We have been saved for years. We have been saved for decades. Decades after decades we are in the house of God. But there is no scripture that has ever been fulfilled in us. You know why? Because Christ is not in us. Most of the time, we love putting blames on other people and pastors. No, it's because they don't want to pray for us. No, it's because when I want to tell them my problem, they don't listen. That's why my problem is not solved. No, 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 no. The answer is, is Christ in you? The issue is not being prayed for. The issue is not the blessing. The issue is, is Christ in you? Yes, they might not pray for you like you're saying. They might not listen to your problem like you want. But as long as there is Christ, life in abundance, there is that light that makes way in you. Your problems will be solved. Your issues will be addressed. How many of us go to church? We go to church the same way. We come out of the church the very same way. There is nothing Nothing at all that Holy Spirit is doing upon us. Yet we are in church on daily basis. Yet you are always there sitting in front or sitting anywhere. Yet when they say people who wants to tithe, you are there. People who are pledging, you are there. People who are doing this, you are there. But there is nothing about your life that can testify and attest to people that there is Jesus who died on the cross of Calvary many years ago and who changed your life around amongst your surroundings. When people look at us, they can't even tell we are Christians. When people look at us, they don't even wish to be associated with us. Yet we are children of God. The Bible says we are the light of the world. We are like a city placed on a hill which you cannot hide. How come nobody sees you? Did you always ask a question? If I can ask your neighbors or people you live with, or your family members, that you are a Christian, are they going to agree? One day, did you once said many years ago that as pastors, people go to the funeral, you'll be burying someone. And when you are standing by the graveside, you'll be saying, this person was a Christian. And somebody behind you will be saying, Muruti has been traveling on. This man, I'm sure he has no idea of what he's talking about. Because the person we're burying here, even if could eat a garrot a mail. How many of us, there's a woman there in the Bible. I believe her name was Dokas. The Bible says she took care of infants, Banaba Sinang and her community. The Bible says when she died, the community was weeping. Why? Because they saw Christ in her. They knew what she can do. If you die today, is your neighbors going to cry for you? Or there'll be one of those people who'll be saying, Ah, you know, Tama Ileshem, Marabe Akaraka or Ruai. Ne Akaraka or Ruai. Kurvotai Pusholi Bible, I tell you, we shall cry. 
That's the type of life we live. We are Christians for holding the Bible on Sunday. We bath, re makeup, le makwai kwai, re sore di handbag so that my neighbor can see me ke per skepe za nor ke akireke. But the Bible that I'm holding has no impact on me. Ayon khole ka silo. Yet I am a child of God. The Bible that I am carrying going to the house of God because when you get here, mama will ask you before she preach, where is your Bible? And you lift it. Mommy, I have my Bible. But the same Bible you are carrying has no effect, effect on you. I did a seal. I know but you are called a children of God. You are called a child of God. You are called a child of God. We do things. That's why I Pharisee. We stand on the corners of the street so that people can say we are Christians. We do things so that my church members or my colleagues can speak and say, Kim wana mudimo pulushidwe. Mara midiro yare na irana na lento irivolelang. The things that we do are contrary to what we say. I am a child of God. But who when I am angry I can tell you kura won tsebe botse. Kura tswa ka bong khumane ka na kwela ke sintshu ke pholoshe ke thakane le Jesu. Wa tswa be wa tse eh a ho tse o e tswa re mo. Kwa tswa o won tsebe botse. But we are children of God. When I pray, God bless me. God bless me. It's because I want to, sh to show says Lucy that God can bless me better than you. Because I come from a better family or because I have a better job. Now my question is, in the midst of all the stunts we are pulling and the show we are doing, where is Christ in us? In the midst of saying, "Ngasi paloke mama ngore kile Brazilian na yakai bila akena for better ya hai kia Hong Kong ya ko China mall." Where is Jesus in you? That's why I say, why is it that when God has washed us with His precious blood, we go back to our sins? We go back to the things that we used to do. The only difference between us and Haythen, but they put it plain, I'm not a Christian. So whatever I do, it doesn't matter because I'm not a Christian. We in public, we say we are Christians, but behind closed doors, we are as good as Haythens. At times, they're even better than us. But we are children of God. We have been given such an opportunity, such a platform for us to reach, to live a righteous life and seek the face of God when we still have time. Let God rule and reign in our lives so that we can attain that eternal life. Have you ever imagined how it would feel like if you spent all your life in church and on the last day? You go to hell with your Makelwan who was drinking alcohol without caring who's listening or who's looking. And you find each other there in hell. What kind of Christianity are we living? We now go to church for entertainment. We now go to church because that church looks better than which whom whom's church. We now go to church because the, 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 the music of that church is much better than Kareke Efing Fing. We now go to church because no, there's a sister I am eyeing in that church. So if I can go there, I'll be able to win her. And I take her out of the church or a brother, whatever you can put it. We now go to church because I know if I don't wake up and, and bath, mama will call me and say, Tendo, are you crazy? What are you doing? 
I know if mommy, if I don't go to church, today is today. Mommy's going to fight with me. Hey, get him at him. You wake up, you bath, you go to church. You go, hey, mama, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to church. But then in the midst of all the circus and the show that we are doing, where is Jesus in us? Ask your neighbor, where is Jesus in you? The Bible says, seek me and leave. It's in Amos 5 verse 4. The Lord said, seek me and leave. I said to you in the beginning, the Bible says in John that everything that is created was created for him and through him. Meaning without him, you are non-existent. That's why the Bible says when you believe, you will not pray, perish and have everlasting life. Meaning when you believe in Jesus, in truth and sincerity and honesty, you live. It means all these years that we've been coming to church, playing church, we are not living but moving graves and corpses. Hallelujah. 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 We are living in a time where God has given us his grace. We are living in a time where God has allowed us to reach this far with what we are doing and playing before him. But it has come a time that our playing before God must stop. The Bible says when you seek him, you shall live. When you believe in him, you will not perish but have everlasting life. You must believe and stay in him so that you can have this everlasting life. You have to believe and stay in him and live according to the commandment of the word of God to have this everlasting life. The mistake that we are making is this. Christianity is not a title. Opoloshua. It's not a title, neither is it a status. That's why Christianity is personal. When you receive Christ in your life, it's, 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 it's not a promotion for you to become better than somebody. No. You are fixing your way right with the Lord. You are going back to the origin of God. Why God created you in the first place. So that you can inherit the kingdom that he created for you when he created the world from the beginning. Remember the Bible says in, 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 in Genesis, in Genesis, that control the, lo the world, subdue it, take care of it and everything. You become a child of God so that you can go back to the origin. To your original self. That's how you become, that's why you become a Christian. For you to have a fellowship with the Father. For you to have a dwelling with the Father. That's why the Bible says, I am at the door, I am knocking. Whoever opens, I will come in and stay with him. I will dine with him and he will dine with me. Meaning this Christ that you are receiving is not beside you. It's not in front of you or behind you. It's inside of you. And if Christ is inside of you, the darkness that is around us will not be able to stand the Christ in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a scripture in the Bible that says, greater is he that is in me than the one that is where? In the world. It doesn't say greater is he that is standing beside me. 
It says the one that is in me. Meaning this Christ must live where? In me. And when Christ is living in me, whatever I'm going to do, it's not going to be contrary to the Christ in me. It must work hand in hand with the Christ in me. The thing that we don't, we don't pay attention to, the Bible says there will come a time where the grace of God will be finished. How many of us know that? There will come a time now the question becomes, when that time comes, where will you be? Where will we be? Because we have the opportunity, we have grace of coming before God and giving him our life. But we keep misusing this grace that God is giving us. We come to church, we get what we want. When we move out of the door, everything that has to do with God stays in the church and we live as we are. Let me ask you a question. How many of us remember what Daddy was preaching about on Sunday? How many of us remember what Daddy was preaching about on Sunday? How many of us? Okay, let's do this. Who was here on Sunday? If you were here on Sunday, lift up your hands. Okay, put your hands down. How many of us remember what Daddy was preaching about on Sunday? We don't even reach 20. Now ask yourself this question. What happened to the message of Sunday? If in truth we are coming here for God, what happened to the message of Sunday? What happened to the message of Sunday? I'm not here to condemn everyone, anyone. I'm not here to judge anyone. But I want us to look within ourselves. Look deep down in your heart. Ask yourself this question. Am I living for Christ? Am I with Christ within? Or am I doing things according to my own understanding? Am I a true Christian, a true born again child of God? Or my Christianity has now become my status? So that I can be like others. A child of God. Are we truly children of God? If then we are truly children of God, why there's still darkness found within our footprints that when I walk like this, there is darkness that is following me. Yet I am a child of God. God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Remember Jesus said to his disciples that me and my father, we are one. It means God gave himself up for you and me. He came down and became flesh for you and me. So that we can be reconciled back to him. And we, be, we have a relationship. We become one with him. There are so many things that we are doing that they don't have Christ in us. There are so many things that we keep on justifying ourselves, but they don't show that there is Christ in us. The fruits we are bearing are the fruits of wickedness than the fruits of good. But we are children of God. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says in Isaiah, come, let us reason together. You don't have to die that way. You don't have to stay away like that. You don't have to be in shame like that. You don't have to condemn yourself like that. Come to me who loves you. And I will carry all your burdens for you. I will wash you. You will be as white as snow. You will be clean and spotless again. You don't have to stay there. Jesus.
Jesus is still calling even today. You don't have to stay in the rejection, in the condemnation, in the poverty, in whatever situation that you are finding yourself in. I am here. All you need to do is just to come. Come to me. And I will give your souls rest. There are things that we are battling with in our lives on a daily basis. There are wars that we keep fighting and fighting and fighting. Yet we do not win. Yes, we call the Bible and say, I am more than a conqueror through him who has loved me. But the wars that I'm, I'm fighting, the wars, the battles that I'm facing, I'm not winning them. Why? Because I am not with God. I am fighting on my own. There are things that we live and we say, I'm not going to do this again. We go a couple of days, we come back to the same thing. Why? Because we are not with God. We are doing it on our own. He says, come. And I will give you soul's rest. What I love about God is that when you go to him, he doesn't judge you. He doesn't remind you. He doesn't quote them for you. He said in his word, I will wash you, you'll be as white as snow. There will be nothing bad, nothing evil left in you, but his light in you. Hallelujah. <laughs>